Hey guys, this is CK at CK Education. And today I want to share a story with you about a student named Ali. And um, Ali is a great example of a student who, who reminds me um, the importance of um, the, the real elements and the real ingredients, the real things that raise SAT scores. There's so much misconception about um, SAT prep and, and what works and what doesn't work. And um, to share a brief story of how I came to, you know, to, to get into this, um, um, you know, I was an engineer for, I, I didn't start out as an SAT teacher or anything like that. In fact, that was not even on my mind. Um, I was an engineer for uh, about 12 or 13 years. Um, I graduated with an engineering degree. I went into sales and, and management and recruiting. Um, and then I got into engineering and I did that for about 12 or 13 years. My most recent um, engineering job was um, for a federal agency here uh, in DC. And uh, before that, I worked for uh, the, the city government as an engineer. And so that was what I did. And um, uh, when my first um, son was born, uh, I decided to go a different route. I really wanted to, to do my own thing. And so um, I, I did a lot of different things. But one of those things that I did was um, I started teaching. I started tutoring um, writing, okay, essay writing and and things like that. A lot of people think that's weird because you're like, you're an engineer and you, they would expect me to teach calculus or physics or something like that. But I um, started uh, teaching writing. I love writing. And so I did that. And then I started getting questions about whether, you know, I taught SAT. And I told people, no, I don't teach SAT. I've never taught SAT. In fact, I never even took the SAT because when I was um, in, in, in high school, we were allowed to to take something called the WPCT, Washington Pre-College Test. And uh, we were the final class, the final year that was allowed to take that. So we didn't even have to take the SAT. And so anyway, um, I told people I didn't teach SAT because I, I didn't, I had no experience doing it. But one day I decided maybe I should teach SAT. But the problem was I didn't know anything about it. So I started researching. I started talking to people who did it for a long time. and. Uh, well-known people and, and and I started doing some research and I found out a few things number one that everybody pretty much did the same things and that same thing was getting a prep book doing practice problems and doing endless practice problems and pretty much every SAT prep center or tutor or teacher or program or system whatever you want to call it does that they just basically get a book, whether it's Kaplan or Princeton or Gruber's or Peterson's or Spartan's or College Board or, you know, they're, 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 you know there's tons out there. McGraw-Hill, um, everybody has a book. You basically get a prep book and you just go over problems. You just have, it's this endless cycle of going over problems. Now, here's a problem. The problem with going over problems is that it doesn't really work. You don't know how many students I've had in, in the past years. Um, and I've been doing this full time since about 2009 and I've had nearly a thousand students um, and I've taught over 20,000 hours personally, me, myself, teaching students SAT. And I can tell you without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that just going over test problems does not work. Okay, I've had so many students come to me. I had one student who came to me and said, you know, I did, I did, um, I think something like 30 some, 30, like 34, 35 um, practice tests. It took 34, 35 practice tests. And then when they took the real test, they got almost no score improvement at all. So they were very surprised by this, but I wasn't because I heard the story so many times. And Allie is a great example of this. She did some practice tests. She did some things like this. It didn't work. And so when she came to me, um, my system is very different. We don't just go over practice problems. I teach you how to analyze the problems, how to see it differently, how to analyze it differently. And so we use a lot of, uh, I teach a lot of rules and concepts and strategies and, and use exercises to get them there. And the thing about Ali is when she came to me, she, her reading and writing was 520 uh, on the lower side. Her math was 550. So her total score when she started out 1070, not very high at all. After 26 classes, that's 39 hours, 
her reading and writing on a real test was 690 and her math was 680. So she got a 170 point increase in reading and writing and a hundred and what is this? 130 point increase in math for a total score increase of 300 points. She ended up at 1370. She started out at 1070. That's a 300 point increase in just 39 class hours. Now, the thing is, you might think, oh man, she probably did, you know, 20 practice tests. No, she took like five. Okay. I had her take maybe like five practice tests. The majority of our time was spent teaching her the rules and concepts that are most important for raising her, her score and working on uh, what I call exercises. These are not test problems. These are exercise, very custom exercise um, problems in each of the sections to help you apply the rules and the concepts and to help you see the problems differently, analyze them differently, and you know, improve your decision making because you now know what to do. You know how to look at it. You know what kind of tricks College Board plays and so on and so forth. So that's what we did the majority of our time. And she had a significant uh, score increase. And so, like I said, 300 points in 39 class hours. So why doesn't taking a lot of practice and just going over a lot of practice test problems, why doesn't that work? It makes you feel like you're doing something. You're really not achieving much though. And the reason it doesn't work is that you're still doing the problems. You're still, whether it's your 50th problem or the 100th problem, you're still pretty much still solving those problems the way you've always solved them. Your assumptions about the test and the, and the questions are still the same. Nothing has changed in how you think about them and how you approach them. Nothing has changed in knowing any differently how College Board actually designs them and what they're looking for you don't know anything differently about that. You just you just keep, you know, using the same um, programming in your mind, and, and you just keep solving the problems the same way. And so, no wonder you get the same results. Okay, and so this is why, in, in, in a nutshell, why it doesn't work if you just keep doing practice problems. But the problem is, pretty much every SAT prep uh, tutor, teacher, program center does this. Um, I don't think they're actively trying to deceive or, you know, people or anything like that. I, I think they just don't know any better. I don't think they know what really works. And so they just do this because everybody does this, um, which is unfortunate. But that's just, you know, that's just the way it is. But um, Ali was a great example of um, she, she, you know, focused on the, you know, she was able to focus on the right things, uh, the things that I was teaching her and she mastered those things and she got a big increase. So very proud of her. And so I wanted to share that story with you today. If you're interested in being interested in becoming one of my students, the best thing is to go to my website, cKeducation.org and fill out the SAT prep application form. In the bottom of the application form, there is a comment section. And in that comment section, please write there why you think you would be a great fit as one of my students. Um, I can't take every student because my schedule just doesn't allow it, but I will do everything I can to accommodate you especially if I think that you'd be a great fit. So I hope to hear from you soon. And until my next video, please stay well.